What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, checking out the first revealed cards from our upcoming water-themed Legendary Duelist pack. And for the first time in Lord knows how long, we finally have a character on the cover of the pack that is not from the original DM anime. Because when it comes to recent Legendary Duelists, I'm pretty sure they're all DM characters, whether it be Yugi, Bakura, Merrick, going back to like Sisters of the Rose, which I believe had Mai on it. So yeah, I can't remember the last time they had somebody from like Zaxo or 5Ds or whatever. But uh, yeah, looks like we are going to get um, a water themed one. And you can see, obviously, there's going to be a new, um, you know, Shark XC monster. Some people are saying maybe another version of 101, something like that. Shark looks really good on the cover. But today we're going to be talking about Mako Tsunami, a.k.a. that freaky fish guy, because he's got some new support. And it's kind of what you would expect, you know, stuff that is kind of a throwback to Umi and a legendary fisherman, stuff like that. First card up is Mega Fortress Well, which I believe has the same stat line as, like, the old Fortress Well, the, um, like, the ritual one, but don't quote me on that. Anyways, uh, the first, second, and third are all hard ones per turns. First effect, if Umi is face up on the field, you can activate this effect. Your water monsters can attack directly this turn. Second effect, during your opponent's battle phase, uh, you can target one face up monster. Your opponent controls, destroy it. Second, or excuse me, third effect, um, if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target a water warrior monster uh, from your deck or graveyard. There's that throwback to Legendary Fisherman. Uh, either add it to your hand or special summon it. So obviously, this is supposed to be the boss monster for this theme and you've got some pretty good effects i mean if you're going second or you really just need to do damage having all your monsters attack directly because i mean most likely you're going to be mainly summoning water monsters like having all your water monsters attack directly seems pretty nuts a very easy way to otk even through monsters and then the second effect is simple removal um it only works during your opponent's turn and specifically during their battle phase so it's not like the most reliable removal but it is kind of like a nice little plus and then the third is a floating effect which you know can add things like legendary fisherman uh you know the legendary fisherman 2 or even if you're playing the first one back from your graveyard or you can just search it from your deck and you know you can summon it or you can just add it to your hand so a pretty decent card the next card is doom kraken and uh this is kind of like a weird disruptor but i like it uh level 4 1400 attack 1600 defense uh, if Umi is face up on the field, quick effect, you can target one water monster you control except Doom Kraken and one monster your opponent controls. You special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, you return the first target to the hand, and if you do that, destroy the second target. So this is kind of like, a, well, let me read the second effect. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can return this card to the hand, and if you do, negate the attack. So the second effect is kind of like a nice little utility effect, uh, just a way of making this card feel useful when it's actually on the field considering that its main effect kind of um activates from the hand but i i, li I like its disruption effect i mean it does require you to already have a water monster on the field but it's kind of nice it bounces one of your opponent's cards and then summons itself now you do have to blow your own monster up but you know as we just read with the mega fortress well that card does actually float when it is destroyed by a card effect so you know depending on what you destroy you might end up being able to you know salvage something and when this card's on field you can just bounce it back to your hand and you can negate an attack and then maybe in the next turn you can just use it again because the effects are hard once per turn so this is a cute little card uh next up we have uh the electric jellyfish and th this this is probably the best card this this card is absolutely nuts i mean this is Yu-Gi-Oh 101 for modern times uh level 4 1400 1700 uh first and second hard ones per turns you can send one umi from your hand deck or face up field to the graveyard special summon one water monster from your hand second effect which is just the bee's knees uh when your opponent activates a spell card or effect or a monster effect and umi is face up on the field quick effect you can negate that effect and if you do this card gains 600 attack and defense Ladies and gentlemen, this is Yu-Gi-Oh in a nutshell. <laughs> the card has, uh, yeah, you get a, you get a, you basically get an Omni Negate for monster, monster effects. You get an Omni Negate for spells and spell effects, and your monster becomes progressively stronger. So this card will instantly jump to 2,000 attack or 2,300 defense if it's in defense mode. And uh, what's not the like about that effect? 
Every deck wants a little bit of negation in uh, these days and times that we live in. Now, the second effect also makes it pretty good as an offensive threat. Um, you can send, you know, an Umi from your graveyard and then, or excuse me, from your deck to your grave. And then you could summon like the Mega Fortress Well. Again, if you're worried about all your Umis being trapped in your graveyard, I believe it's um, Sea Stealth Attack that can activate uh, Umi from your graveyard. So you do have some ways of recovering uh, Umi, but... Yeah, this, this, this card is obviously, like, the, the main card you kind of want to get on the field ASAP because it gives you negation, and negation is, uh, that's that's the key phrase for Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, we have Fish Sonar, which is kind of like a, a Rota, but can also special summon. Normal spell card, hard once per turn. Add one level seven or lower monster that is a water normal monster or specifically list Umi in its text from your deck to your hand, and then if Umi is face up on the field, you can special summon one water normal monster from your deck. So, uh... Uh, yeah, this is kind of like the Rota. Basically, it searches um, every single card that we just read because they all have the word Umi in the text. And then you also have a way of, you know, special summoning a normal water monster. I don't know if you're really going to be playing those, but I guess you don't have to draw them because you're special summoning from the deck. Like maybe that opens the door up for you to just run, you know, maybe a, a couple of vanillas in your deck. I don't know if I'd run multiple, but... You know, one random vanilla, maybe it won't hurt. We have Sea Stealth Attack or Sea Stealth 2, which is this, is this, this has to be related to Sea Stealth Attack, right? Like, that has to be, why wouldn't it be Sea Stealth Attack 2? But anyways, I, the cards have to be related because... They, they, I mean, they're, they're for the whole Umi theme, so it definitely has to be related. Third effect is a hard once per turn. First effect, this card's name becomes Umi while face up on the field or while it is in the graveyard. So I guess the original Sea Stealth attack can activate this from the graveyard because it will count as Umi in the graveyard. Uh, second effect, your opponent cannot target water monsters you control with non-water monster effects. Uh, third effect, at the start of the battle phase, you can special summon one monster that specifically uh, lists Umi in its text or one water normal monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position but destroy it at the end of the battle phase. Man, they, they really want us to play these normal water monsters. I'm, that's the one thing I'm not quite getting about this support. Like, I understand everything else about the, the monsters that have Umi in the name, but I'm not quite understanding the water, the, the normal water. Anyways, we'll stick to uh, summoning a monster that has Umi in the name. And obviously, um, if you summon your Mega Fortress well, like, let's say that you had it on field, it died, you searched out uh, something else to replace it, and now it's in your graveyard, you can special summon it back uh, from your graveyard, and then during your opponent's battle phase, you can just blow up a monster, and then if it dies again, you can just get another search. So I'm guessing that's what they want you to, you know, possibly summon back. But then you could go for like the jellyfish, and the, the jellyfish could negate a spell or a monster effect activating in the battle phase. And I mean, even if the monster just hypothetically is there to to block an attack, like I guess that's fine. The monster's gonna die basically at the end of the battle phase anyway so you know just get something out of that monster the mega fortress well probably is the best bet and then finally we have um you know, this is kind of like the gimmicky card every time we get a bunch of support for like an anime character one of the cards has got to be kind of gimmicky this is uh carry you carry you shin um of the reef isn't that yeah that, that's that, that's the blue guy on the card isn't he he's the one that was on the like the torrential uh, tribute card. Anyways, normal trap card, hard, more, hard once per turn. Send one face up Umi. You control to the graveyard. You cannot special summon monsters into the end of your next turn except water monsters. So you are locked. Also, special summon up to two water normal monsters and or monsters that specifically list Umi in their text with different names from your hand or deck in defense position. Then, uh, if your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon any number of level six or lower water or uh, normal water monsters from your hand or deck. So, <laughs> that's kind of a lot to take in. Um, obviously, the ceiling of this card is high because... Um, if my math is right, you could potentially summon four monsters off of this card, which is crazy. And they can, I, I guess, all be from your deck, which is even crazier. Like, <laughs> there's not a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that let you summon four potentially from your deck. Um, they do it. You, you do have to have some different names in there. And the second set has to be your, your, you know, normal monsters, which I don't really know about that. But, um... I think the biggest kind of problem with this card, to be honest, is simply that it is a trap card. I know everybody says that, and uh, I don't understand why this couldn't have been a quick play. Like, 
you don't get to summon the monsters in attack mode, so there wouldn't have been any cheese, you know, OTKs or anything like that. Uh, I just, I feel like it being a, um, a trap is kind of slow, but, I mean, it does have a nice upside, don't get me wrong, but it does also come at the cost of uh, giving up that Umi. Although, again, as I said earlier, if you play Sea Stealth Attack, you can activate Umi from your graveyard. So sometimes Umi in the graveyard isn't, or giving up an Umi isn't really that big of a deal. It's an interesting card. I, I don't know necessarily if i would run this one it just feels a little too gimmicky because you know like it's kind of slow and then you also have to to get the highest ceiling your opponent has to have a card and you also have to give up your umi but the rest of the cards are, are definitely kind of cute i mean will this stuff be competitive probably not but definitely still interesting and a, a character that i definitely did not expect to get more support anyways as more stuff comes out from this legendary duelist of course i'll cover it you guys let me know what you thought in the comment section below thank you guys for watching as always